สวัสดีค่ะ and good afternoon to you all this is the English language summary of the daily press briefing on the COVID-19 situation in Thailand for Wednesday July uh, the 7th uh, 2021 and we're broadcasting live from the Center for COVID-19 Situation Administration or the CCSA. I'll be giving a summary of the briefing that was just um, given to us by Dr. Apisa Maisi Rangsan, the Deputy Spokesperson for the CCSA. So allow me to start with the newly confirmed cases today and the overall statistics you, which you will see shortly on the screen right now. Um, we have reported today uh, uh, quite a new high number of cases, um, standing at 6,519. We have uh, currently active cases, patients being treated at medical facilities standing at 67,614 cases. And out of those cases, we have 2,496 in critical condition. And also 676 are on ventilators. And this is on an upward trend. We can notice that the, the numbers of uh, critical uh, patients in critical conditions and patients on ventilators will continue to increase. We have, although, uh, a good number of new recoveries reported at 4,148 cases. Um, the total recoveries therefore stands today at 171 cases. Um, the new fatalities that I regretfully have to report to you today stands at 54. The median age of the deceased cases stands at 69. And so we have an accumulated total of fatalities standing at 2,293. And it seems that the fatality rates of the current wave of infections now is at 0.84%, which is also at an upward trend. And almost half of the new fatalities were infected by family members or were infected from being in crowded areas such as markets or places of worship. And therefore, physical distancing and mask wearing is by all means still very crucial in the prevention against transmissions. And even while being among family members in a casual settings, we cannot let our guards down. And the World Health Organization has stressed in particular for mask wearing when socializing, when you must absolutely be in a room together with a group of people in closed settings where there's limited ventilation. So what we are experiencing right now in Thailand is a rapid spread of the Delta strain. And studies on the infection rate of the Delta variant in many countries indicate that case numbers could double every two weeks. This study also suggests that Thailand may see up to 10,000 new daily cases very soon. And this is what Dr. Abhisamai just mentioned to us right now. Um, so let me bring your attention to the screen right now. There was, okay, this will display uh, the provinces which have reported the top 10 uh, provinces that have reported the highest um, COVID cases today. And these continue to be the same provinces as earlier reported. So Bangkok still is on number one on the list with 1,542 nine new cases. And this is followed by Samut Prakan with 548 and Samut Sakon with 434, followed by Nakhon Patom at 266 and Chonburi at 262. 
And uh, because of this, today at the CCSA operational meeting, um, several measures were discussed um, and observations as well. So the new clusters of infections remain to be found in the factories. And today the Department of Disease Control reported two new clusters of infections in factories in Ta and Non Taburi provinces. And uh, clusters under surveillance in Bangkok today stands at 118. And also, at least 377 confirmed cases were detected in outer provinces outside of Bangkok, and they were found to have originated from those who traveled from Bangkok metropolitan area. And therefore, the CCSA strongly discourages people from making unnecessary travel across provinces. In fact, prov Observations have indicated that new infections have risen in provinces around the country right now at a rate almost on par with Bangkok. And therefore the Ministry of Interior will further request provincial authorities to toughen their tracking and testing systems as well as to prepare more hospital beds for the scenario of increased infections. In Bangkok, at the same time, the National Institute for Emergency Medical Services will prepare to transport all patients with severe symptoms who are now waiting for hospital beds at home to Bosara Kam Field Hospital within today. And also the Bangkok Metropolitan Administration is now setting up more community isolation centers in the northern part of Bangkok to help monitor symptoms of new confirmed cases and provide basic medical care to these patients while um, the beds for, for these patients are being prepared at medical facilities. Um, and the Ministry of Public Health has approved a plan to set up Suwanapum Field Hospital in the satellite building and this facility will have a capacity of 5,000 beds. Out of that number, 1,360 beds will be allocated for severe cases. Um, and this facility will be opened in early August. So this has helped to prepare for increased numbers of cases. I'd like to give um, an update also on vaccine procurement because yesterday the cabinet had their weekly meeting and they approved the proposal to procure at least an additional 30 million doses of vaccines. And this new lot of vaccines will include 20 million doses of Pfizer and these are due to be delivered in the fourth quarter of this year. Also, within that number, there will also be 10 million doses of, vac of Sinovac vaccines, and these should arrive within the next two months. Both of these vaccines will be administered to the public free of charge. And the government and the CCSA is also um, in the process of considering um, vaccines from other manufacturers in the pipeline for government purchasing, which we will bring updates to you as soon as they are available. Also, the cabinet approved um, the Mo Moderna vaccine to be an alternative option um, for the public for purchasing. And the government pharmaceutical organization, or the GPO, is tasked with negotiating with the supplier of Moderna vaccines on behalf of private hospitals who will be selling and administering Mo Moderna vaccines to the public as soon as a purchase contract is concluded. And as we mentioned earlier, our vaccination campaign is now focusing on inoculating high-risk groups, such as the elderly and people with serious underlying conditions and the seven high-risk diseases. However, 
Since uh, within this month of July, AstraZeneca will, be, will deliver about five to six million doses of vaccines which will not meet our current demand and target. Therefore, the CCSA is planning to resolve this issue by administering um, most of the five to six million doses of AstraZeneca to the priority risk groups first. And for the rest of the general public, Sinovac vaccines have been procured additionally to help meet our target in our vaccination drive. Um, also, yesterday, the advisor to the CCSA and the Dean of the Faculty of Medicine of Sidirat Hospital, Dr. Udom Kachinthan, um, gave a press briefing. Vaccines being administered in in Thailand are effective in preventing severe illness and deaths and therefore the government urges all people in Thailand especially those also um, Dr. Udom gave an update regarding the third shot of vaccine or what we call the booster shot um, that medical colleges in Thailand are now studying the necessity and the effectiveness of administering booster shots. Um, there is currently no proven scientific data available on the efficacy of a booster shot. However, some countries have been administering a mixture of vaccines manufactured by different um, technologies, which appear to be significantly helpful in preventing hospitalization and deaths. And the result of studies from the Thai Medical which is provided by the Tourism Authority of Thailand, uh, who have announced that Got Samui, Got Pangan, and Got Tao are already prepared to welcome visitors from overseas under the Samui Plus scheme, and they are ready on time for July the 15th as planned, because um, the vaccination drive in those um, islands have been very progressive. Right now, about 65 to 72 percent on average of the population have at least received their first doses of vaccines. And more information on the scheme will be announced later this week before international travelers can apply for a certificate of entry from Thai embassies and consulates generals overseas. The Tourism Authority of Thailand also announced that during the first five days of Phuket Sandbox scheme, almost 1,900 international travelers have arrived in Phuket, and 6,000 more are expected to visit the island this month. Visitors under the program can contact the Tourism Authority call center at the number you see on the screen right now for any questions. So before I end my briefing, I'd like to acknowledge some questions we've received from um, some foreign media about the vaccination program for foreigners under 60 years of age. Well, as the Ministry of Public Health is now focusing on vaccinating high-risk groups, people in other age groups, Thai and foreigners alike, may experience delays in their appointments, and this is necessary. However, the Ministry aims to inoculate the vulnerable groups in Bangkok within this month, and more vaccines should be allocated to the general public by August. So please stay tuned for more updates as we will keep you informed about our national vaccination drives and supplies of vaccines as soon as we know them. And we will focus on getting everyone 
vaccinated at least getting their first jab as a priority because all vaccines have been proven to be extremely potent in reducing the risk of hospitalization and deaths. And this is crucial at this juncture as our medical system is being heavily burdened right now and we want to reduce the risks to any loss of lives as soon as possible. And we are battling against a completely new virus which displays behavior beyond current existing epidemiological knowledge and all countries are experiencing the same limitations. Current vaccines have been developed based on the original SARS-CoV strain first detected in Wuhan in 2019 and since then the virus has naturally mutated to many new strains that um, have become more resistant against our current vaccines. But that does not mean that the efficacy of vaccines have been compromised because they can all still very efficiently protect us against the risk of severe symptoms and death. And this is confirmed and supported by evidence of the World Health Organization. And therefore, I wish to reiterate as Dr. Udom mentioned, that all vaccines provided by the government are highly efficient and can serve as armors of protection in our fight against this pandemic. That's all I have for you today. I thank you very kindly for your attention and we'll see you again tomorrow with another update. Thank you. Kha.